So um, let's think about, uh, I got the Be Funny as a Speaker up here. And I was thinking that, you know, Dave Hamilton sort of remind me to, reminded me of this, of how the, the whole recording a webinar is mm -hmm. such an efficient way to, you know, create the product. Um, do you have ScreenFlow on your Mac? You know, I, I bought it for Amanda, but I think it's on her laptop. But I think through the account, we should be able to install it on multiple machines through iTunes. I think so I should be able to get it on two here. machines. Yeah, so I should be able to put it on this one. Yeah, now what what do you want right now? Yeah. An iMac. Got it. So you have her laptop and then an iMac, right? Yeah. Have you guys have you completely switched off of the PC platform? Uh, you know, I have some old software that I have not bought Mac versions for, so I still use my laptop for that. And for my mobile, I bought a Chromebook. Got it. For your, so you I'm not 100 percent Mac yet. Yeah, so what do you mean for your mobile, meaning mobile phone? No, no, for when I travel. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so yeah, I didn't buy a full laptop. I wanted something light. And uh, Chromebook for me made more sense at that time than the iPad, so. How does it, uh, how's that working out? Uh, it's fine. I mean, I don't do much computing when I travel, so the Chromebook is fine for email, anything on the web, word processing. So covers yes, everything I need. I don't get the games you can get with the iPad, but that's pretty much the only reason the iPad would have been better. Yeah, and the iPad, you know, you'd have to buy a separate keyboard and the whole bit. Yeah, the Chromebook, like, it all comes together. And the Chromebook just out of the box was, you know, a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the iPad, so. Yeah, how much was the Chromebook? 250 Nice. And what is, so with word processing, you just use Google Docs, right? Yeah, and they even have a offline mode for that, too, so even if I'm, like, don't want to pay for internet somewhere, I can still do that. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. Well, so let's talk a little bit. So I was thinking about this whole webinar thing. Um, the It's such a, you know, web uh, go to webinar combined with ScreenFlow. I mean, you can really create products, um, you know, good quality products that, that work. My only suggestion, and you may want to take, I'll send these to you if you want, but Stanley has sort of trained me on, um, so if you combine go to webinar sort of plus screen flow, um, you get to, and then, so once you record, so I, I try and, I try and make the screen, as you can see my screen here, I've got a little bit of a sort of a, more of a, like a movie screen orientation, trying to be as close to 16 by nine as possible. Just, you know, about. So sort of that kind of orientation. And if you multiply that out, um, it comes to, so when, when you save in ScreenFlow, it allows you to save it as a certain size. And I just save it as 480 by 270. And that is, if you take the multiple, that's whatever that is, 30 times each of these. Mm -hmm. So, and with GoToWebinar, you know, being able to, both have, you know, you can use, you can have people's faces in there as well, I think. Um, and you can also obviously do some kind of a, a, a screen presentation. I think it's a really super efficient way to just create the product because then you can get paid on the, on the front end as well. And, right. You know, we already, you know, this is already, I'm paying for go to webinar every, every month anyway. So we might as well make use of it you know, as, you know, out with our ventures, certainly. And if you want to use it for something else, feel free to do so. So I think that's, I think that's the way to go. And I talked to, um, I talked to, or had a little bit of an email conversation back and forth with Bill. And he was saying how he did his first performance uh, webinar today. And it went, you know, really, really well. Um, and I also talked to him about the idea of, of doing something, you know, at a reduced rate, telling the people in Philly about it. So speakers, you know, and voice kind of thing. So that's mm -hmm. all up in the air. So what you were saying that what you wanted to do is come up with something. Um, and you know what I was just thinking? One of the things that's tended to work out pretty well for us is where we get and do some kind of a multi-speaker event. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm just thinking that maybe we could do that with Be Funny as a Speaker as well when we put a product together. Maybe we could recruit some other people who are humorous to, uh, to contribute and put some kind of a multi-speaker program together. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be um, very cool uh, as a future product, kind of like we did with the Speaking Expert Teleseminar. Yeah, so so once we put the uh, yeah put the basic program together, and again, remind me, you're you're seeing that as with a workbook, and what? How do you see that again? For which one? For the basic sort of front end product for be funny as a speaker. Yeah, I mean, the basic I'm seeing is kind of a an update of the Unleashing Inner Comedian product, which would be like a one hour, maybe two hour tops MP3 with a with a workbook. People can follow along, do some exercises and things. Got it. And price point? Uh, for that one, I was thinking low, like twenty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to get people so kind of into it. Let's let's think about some of the other. Okay, so what then would we have? Let's sort of fill in these other items here. So let's think about if we have that at the $27 price point, what do you think? Let's fill in some of these other gaps here. What do you think we'd do at 50? Um, at 50, I was thinking the somewhere between 50 and 100, I was thinking the bigger, like six audio. That could be the one with different, that could be like a teleseminar one with six other speakers. It could be just me and you, or but that's kind of where I was thinking for that. Got it. And then we wanted to also have sort of the high-end package, and let's just put that as greater than a thousand, as something that is sort of personal uh, coaching. Um, and so then we'd want to have something maybe at the $200, some kind of a group coaching, right? Yeah, somewhere. I mean, I think this one we're planning on doing this month, I was Hoping to charge around four hundred. Do you think that should be more like two hundred for a five I'm week? Just, I'm just sort of playing with numbers here, so okay. Um, you know, I don't think there's any reason why we can't. I'm just trying to sort of just put some stuff together and and uh, and think about it. I think that like my idea earlier, where you can either just watch or watch and participate, you know, in some stuff. So you, if you're just a watcher, you know, something like watch only, and this is group coaching or watch sort of plus. Right. So we give people a two price option. And because you could certainly learn plenty from just watching other people as they get coached. But, yeah, I mean, the content will all be there, too. So Yeah, exactly. But you could gain a lot more individual sort of instruction elements if you did the, uh, did the other. Right. So, um, yeah, I think there's – and I think that this is – so when you think – because you haven't really started it. I know that when we were just doing all the stuff for um, Speaking Expert and doing the blog posts and stuff like that, you found that kind of tedious and, and, and difficult to keep up with. So, when, But when you think about this program or this sort of site and now these efforts, to do the writing for this, on a scale of 1 to 10, what was the other one and what do you think this will be in terms of ease? So if, if, you know, if the other one was like an 8 difficulty, is this more like a 2 or a 3? Oh, I think to start it will be lower. I mean, frankly... The just coming up with ideas will probably be harder because it's you know, be funny as a speaker could be a subset of speaking experts, so um, there's fewer things to write about. But I think not trying to force you know two to four blog posts a day um, will certainly make it easier. And then taking things, starting with some group coaching programs, should you know, we can use some of that to create material. So 
you know, and I think that was part of the tediousness of it was that uh, it was trying to write that consistently with really nothing to show for it. So I think the other um, thing that we can do is, did you watch the Oscars, by the way? Uh, actually, no, I kind of missed the whole thing. I saw well, some highlights like the next day, but I think that that would be something, for example, I mean, you could have come up with by watching that you could have come up with five or 10 different blog posts. And and it would have tied into current events pretty well as also. You know, so that's the kind of thing where maybe we can get sort of some of our material, you know, from pop culture or from current events. Right. And, uh, you know, whether it's watching what happens on The Daily Show or The Colbert Report or whatever, and using those clips as examples. I think that that helps to make it a lot more relevant and it also gives us a source for material that's easy to do. So in other words, we don't necessarily have to create new material, but we can cri critique material done by others. Right. You know, and show... Yeah, and then at some point going forward, we could have people submit stuff um, as well, like for review. But I think to start with, I want to... You know, I kind of create a list of five or ten things to start with content-wise, so... It's a combination of video posts and uh, written posts. Got it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that sounds like uh, I think that, that we're on the right track there. Yeah, did you get um, – I emailed you my kind of draft of the copy for the group coaching program. Did you get that? You know what? If you sent it, I don't think I did. Could you send it again? Yeah, I'll send it now. I think I sent it actually like yesterday morning, but I will, uh, huh. I will resend it. Make sure you have it. Yeah, put it's put something, you know, big caps on the title so I can on the subject. What's that? Put something in big caps in the in the subject so I you know can see it. But um, what else here? Um, I'll tell you. Let me just you know, I think that certain things. You know, all of a sudden, like today. Or in, in the last two weeks or so, I've had two people call me and want to do personal boot camps like that don't even know me. They, well, they know me because they know who I am and whatever. And I'm just thinking that um, it would be kind of interesting to figure out a way to like – like I'm just looking at our, our tagline here for Be Funny as a Speaker. And what I want to, th what I'm thinking about is, we need to do something that will allow us to, to really capture people and, you know, something. For example, I'm going with, I'm thinking of something like, you know, getting you to be thirty percent funnier almost overnight. Mm -hmm. Something where, you know, because I'm thinking that people come to me. Because I've now established myself as the information marketing guy, or at least one of the top two or three guys, right? And and I've created that reputation for myself by a combination of just being out there, writing a whole bunch of stuff, you know, being all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, I did get kind of annoyed the other day. Somebody invites me to go down to uh, Atlanta in about a week, and you know, oh, do you want to speak? And I'm like, I looked at their website and. All the speakers were already listed, and it's sort of like I was an afterthought. And I said to the guy, I go, well, yeah, I'd like to speak at some point, but maybe, you know, whoever you're telling to get in touch with me, why don't you have them get in touch with me a little bit earlier on in the process here? Um, <laughs> you know, because it's sort of like I don't want to, and I think that maybe we could, you know, and, and I think that I've been watching, I watched the last few episodes, I've been binge-watching, House of Cards with Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. I have not watched that yet. Phenomenal, by the way. One of the best written shows on TV now. Um, yeah, so it's I on my IQ. I want to watch it, but I uh, haven't yet. I'll tell you what, why I think this is important. Because if you think of the various categories that we could subset or break down, be funny as a speaker, one of them is politicians. And I know that mm -hmm. field pretty well. And And so one of the things we could do is to sort of niche ourselves, you know, within that and be thinking about, so who would they be? 
I'm thinking it would be, you know, I'm thinking of a few groups here, but obviously, just use that one as an example. So hold on a second here. So politicians, corporate execs. Um, let's see here, uh, you know, presenters or speakers or presenters. Salespeople. You know, so I'm thinking of niching this down a little bit because I think that we might be able to get, you know, we might be able to get people who find us to realize, you know, that these are sort of our niches and then all we need is a few people to try it and, uh, you know, we're off to the races. I mean, it, it would be kind of cool um, to just sort of be thinking niche within the niche there, I think. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for that. I kind of want to get the professional speakers going first, and then I think, kind of like Bill DeWeese did, he just kind of started directly with people who were really just trying to do voiceover, and now he's kind of branching out into speakers and stuff. So I think getting that one foundation one done. I agree. And, and then so, repeating the process with all the others. Yep. And I'm just thinking that, although I think that it may we may want to put it up on the site because if somebody finds the site, let's say they found the site, right? And mm -hmm. instead of seeing across, um, you know, home about blog contact resources, blah, blah, blah. Imagine if you had politicians click here, blah, 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 click here. In other words, we could have something in a little, like one paragraph, you know, one paragraph blurb geared just to that group. Right. So that on the off chance that somebody just sort of goes there and finds us, you know, we could, you know, and all, all it takes is, is one to then have them up as a sample, et cetera, et cetera. I think that might be good. Okay. You know, something that, something to think about, but I agree. We want to start with what we know already and where we already have inroads. And uh, I, and again, I think that your idea, which you said last time we spoke, about you know sort of leveraging your, I mean, because you you you're so low key and non pushy at the NSA functions that I think that now people know and trust you enough that if you started to sort of say, hey, you know, I'm now starting to do this more, I don't think people would begrudge you that at all. You've you've sort of put in your time to sort of establish yourself as you know, um, somebody who's not just out for people's money, obviously. Right. I've done a few chapters and stuff and some nationals, so I feel like I have a body of people I can go out to. So that's kind of why I want to start with a group coaching program try to generate some cash, which will be nice to make some money, but also it'll be more motivating to be like, all right, well, you know, instead of spending nine months trying to make some money, um, you know, make some money first, and then that'll motivate the blog and the additional product creation and all that stuff. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, um, how many people now do we have on the various lists and stuff? I don't know. That list has become kind of crap. There have been so many. It was like 3,000, but I get so many of these random, like, junk emails on there. I don't know what the hell is going on. So I don't know how many valid emails are on there. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking that we also probably should start, you know, a specific YouTube channel just for this like yeah that's on the list um because we have a speaking expert one but it probably makes sense just to do a be funny one yeah how to be how to be funny you know kind of channel yeah and i'm thinking because the reason why is that you know all of this goes back to you know to people to identifying people who who are interested in your topic and if we had you know a bunch of people who were you know, on the YouTube channel, sort of. And and the nice thing about this is we could do a, a very, these videos don't have to be long at all to be effective. They can be 90 seconds to three minutes long and be really right. good. Right. You know, um, how to be funny uh, at a wedding or whatever is, you know, there's a couple of little ideas, bullet points, whatever, show a piece of wedding crashers, you know, as a clip, whatever. Yeah. 
and, and short little snippets. And then what happens is people start signing up because maybe they're in a field where they have to, they don't consider themselves, you know, they can't, their sense of humor or whatever, they don't feel they're that good. And so they, they sign up for the list because I think that, uh, you know, voiceover is so specific. I think he's up to like 4,400 now or whatever. But we got to be thinking about lists and compiling the list and giving them something that'll help them, you know, help them to be funny or whatever it is they're doing. Right. What other stuff is on your list of things to do? Let me just hear some of them. Uh, with regards to this stuff? Yeah, you said, you know, you said... Well, you, the site is kind of broken. I put an email to Stanley. I haven't heard back. But if you try to click on any of those links, the site throws up an error. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. Um, so obviously that's kind of the first step. Then it's seeding the content. So I got a few new um, blog posts and stuff to write and videos to shoot. Uh, I shot a new intro video. It's on my YouTube account, but I think the quality is low. Use the camera, so I got to redo it. Oh, you know what? Should give me the link right now, and let me just click on it. Let me see what it's like. Uh, By the way, if Stanley doesn't respond quickly, re, you know, say, hey, I don't know if you got this, and, and copy me on it, and say, Fred is really, Fred wants to get this done kind of thing. Don't don't let him blow you off. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Let me get this link. So I put a link in the chat window. Hey, okay, this cool. Is Welcome to Pete. Oh, oh, let me adjust that. Let me know when I can refresh. Yeah. Privacy. All right, try it now. Try to reload that page. Okay. Hey, this is Avish Parisher. Welcome to BeFunnyAsASpeaker.com. This website is all about exactly what you would think it is. How you can be funny as a speaker. How you can add humor that is authentic and natural to you to all your pre. You know, speaking of being natural and authentic, I think you're over articulating. Okay. And I would just, re I would relax it a lot more, almost as if you're sitting around, you know, talking to a bunch of people at the cigar peg, and because I think you're you're really trying. It looks like you're trying to get them to do something as opposed to talking to them. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, really, I, and, and I think it has to do with the over-articulation. It's just like, hey, this is Avish Parisher, and I'm, you know, I'm a speaker, and I do a lot of funny shit, so, you know, you've come to the right place. <laughs> and I can teach you how to do funny shit, too. You know, yeah, it's, that makes it's sense. A lot more conversational, I think. Okay. Because I think that, that that looks like, if I'm coming to you and I see that, I'm thinking, uh, this guy may be funny, but he's kind of, he's trying to sell me something right now. Right. So, yeah, I would go with a much more relaxed approach. I think it'll work better. Yeah. You know, I hope. That's fine. I got to re-record anyway, so I can do that. Yeah. Um, but I think I think the idea is, let me just hear the rest of it, though, in terms of content. Presentations. Now, this is really about being funny. It's not about just writing jokes, right? We don't have a PDF here with 100 jokes that you can just take and slip into your presentation. Some people do that. That's not our approach. Our approach is helping you uncover and unleash the natural humor that we all have. Or as I like to say it, applying the three D's to discover your natural humor, to develop it, and then to deliver it. Once you can do those things, everything else becomes easy. So this website has lots of resources to help you do that. We've got a blog with lots of articles. Be sure to read those. And make sure you sign up for our free download. It's a product that's going to help you right away add humor and become funnier. We've also got some stuff for sale, some products and some services. Start off with the free stuff. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I'm sure you get lots of value just gleaning that information. And then if you want to do more, you know, give us a uh, call, send an email, and we'll talk. But start with the free stuff. Download uh, the opt-in. You know, give us your email.
Yeah, I think it's all good content. The three Ds, all that stuff is good content. I just would change it to, and, and you got a little looser as the video went on. Sure, sure. yeah. But I, I, I think that in the beginning, it's much more, hey, it's a Vish. Um, here's what I do, and blah, blah, blah. You know, real cash. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is easy enough? I think that's my only sort of directorial uh, input there. Well, cool. That's It sounds like we're on the right track. So um, in, I know that you're trying to get something going soon. What are what are some of our targets for this in terms of dates and deadlines? Um, I want to do a free webinar on the Monday the 24th and then have the group coaching thing start on the next week, Monday the 31st. Okay, so Monday the 24th is March, right? Yeah. yeah. March. And what time are you thinking of for that? What's the day? What's the day of that? What's March twenty fourth? Monday. Got it. And then to do them on Mondays. Yeah. yeah. So, so it'll kind of be Monday, Monday will almost be like class zero, zero of the group coaching, coaching class. class. Okay. Cool. And what time for that? You thinking? I, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely prefer to do it some point, sometime. It'd be easier for me to do it during the day, not in the evening. I don't know if that's going to affect our registration or not. So I'm not sure exactly who. A lot of the NSA people should be able to do it during the day, but I'm not sure if there's going to be a lot of people who. And obviously, it's going to be recorded, so people can watch it later. But yeah, I'm wondering. Um, so let's think about this. Our, our target, though, this time is going to be speakers, right? Yeah. yeah. Anybody, any speaker who can afford this program can probably be available during the day if they don't have a speaking gig that day. Right. right. Except, Except the people, people who are really into NSA and, and want to be a speaker, speaker but they still have a full-time job. job. Um, but, but I, I think to start, start with, I'll do it during the day and yep. then kind of see what kind of response we get. Yep. And what, so if you're doing it during the day, what, what time are you thinking? Um... I was thinking kind of like in the afternoon, like 3 o'clock Eastern, because then at least West Coast people could, hit, could do it on their lunch break, and I feel like afternoon would be easier for East Coast people. Um, if I did it around lunchtime on the East Coast, it would be really early in the morning for West Coast people. Yep. Not really early, but it would be like the first thing in the day, which is probably not when they want to do a webinar. Yep, I would agree. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's do it. So in order to get that, what else can we? What else do we need to do to to get that going? Do you want to have a page put up to delineate what's going to be in this? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I just emailed over to you. Um, it's kind, kind of the first draft of my. I don't think there's bonuses in there, but other than that, it's the first draft of um, the sales copy for all that stuff. I'm still finishing up the outline for what's going to be covered in each session. Um, again, kind of coordinating with Stanley, trying to figure out how the sign up procedure goes because we have our kind of box and our shopping cart for taking the orders but then the go to webinar has a registration piece as well so uh, I'm not sure how you guys have done that in the past got it well I'll uh, you know that's something also you may want to ask Dave Hamilton about just send him an email okay will do well cool